so here we have the scores and let's find the best model that will give us the best performance. So this one ranks it. So within this column, we have the ranks and let's say, so the, the first one is apparently this one. This is the one with the best score and the score that it gives us the mean score. I'm looking at the right place. It's point point point. <laughs> 0.42. Well, I mean, it's kind of point, point 0.43, I could say. And uh, that is a pretty good score. That is much higher than what we had with the default random forest. But I like just quickly looking around, I also see that there are some other very close scores. So for example, this one is also point 0.43. So um, they are pretty comparable. They are on the same level. And also with the standard deviation, uh, yeah, they, they're on the same level. There is not a big difference. So um, what I want to see is actually I want to compare the, uh, the two of them and then see which one is better. So uh, and I will tell you what I mean by better in a second. So let's see here. The last one was the best one, I think. Yes. And this one is the second one. So let's take a look at the parameters. Uh, number of estimators, the best one has uh, 1800 uh, estimators and the second best one has only 200. So this is a very significant difference in terms of speed because the more trees you have, number of estimators is basically how many trees you have in the random forest, the more trees you have, the slower the algorithm is going to be. And uh, yeah, max depth, this one is 300, this one is 150. And okay, so th there is a significant difference between a uh, number of estimators. So what I want to do now is basically, um, you know, as I said, there, there is not much of a difference between the um, performances here. So basically when this happens, when you're in between two um, different settings, what you can do is to think of other things. For example, how fast is this algorithm going to work? Because let's say you're going to, you're working on this on a company environment and you're going to implement this and someone is going to use it. You don't want your algorithm to be extremely slow in responding. You want it to be fast. So that's why you would go with the faster option if there is not a much difference. So um, let's see, we already looked at the best parameters, so we don't really need this anymore. Okay, uh, I already ran this for you again because these take a long time. So this is the best settings that we had there. Number of estimators 1800, min sample split 2, and all the other ones. It's the same as the last one that we have, which is the best one. And when I ran there, I saw that it took it 320 seconds to just train. And when I did the same thing with the second best settings, it only took 40 seconds to train. So there is a very significant difference there. You know, the, the second one runs one eighth the time it, it takes to run the first one. So uh, I would definitely go with the second one, but uh, let's take also take a look at the test performances because what we're seeing here is basically um, the training performance. Well. Let me put it this way. It says te test score, so you're not confused. Um, what we do, how, what uh, information we give to this one is basically when we're doing the randomized search cross-validation, we give it only our training data, as you see here. We don't really give any test data. If you remember, we, tra we split our data into training set and test set. We only give it, to get, give it the training set. So what this function does is basically it divides the training set into more little chunks of training set and test set. So what happens is this models, all of them here, are trained on a training set and test set that came from our orig original training set. So what happened is these models have never seen the data points in our test set. So that's why I want to run them on our test set here and see if the performance is good because that's also what you want to do. That's also kind of, uh, I think in some places they call this the validation set where it's a validation set is basically a set of data points that your model has never seen before. So after you tune it, after you make it better, you test it on these data points to understand that, you know, oh, did I also overfit the test set or if ever is everything going well? So um, the performance it gives me for the test set for the best set of 
settings as 0.43, which is really, really good. And um, for the second one is actually more or less the same. So it's, it's, not, it's not very high and the errors are getting lower and lower. These guys are basically very similar. So I can't really say this one is better than the other one. It's just, you know, there, there was some decimal number difference here. So that's why they, this one was first and this one was second. So if it were me, I would definitely go for the second option be, just because it's way faster than the first one. So just a small note on why I said this score was very good. So this score is, this R squared score is not objectively good in every model ever. This is only relevant for this specific model that we're working on. So R2, R squared score uh, helps us compare the models built on the same data set. So if you remember our bench, uh, benchmark model had a R squared score of 0.3 only, 0.30. And now we increase that whole 0.2 Point forty-three. So I think that's pretty good and I think this is probably going to be more or less the best score that we're going to get for this data set and for this model. Um, if you want you can go ahead and try the grid search too to find the best absolute best score but that's going to take a long time. One option for that is to use some cloud uh, services where they give you some cloud computing uh, power and then you can use that to uh, run your grid search and find the best absolute best settings for your model but for now i'm happy with this and the last thing i'm going to do is take a look at the plot so it's still not a perfect plot it's it's not really going perfectly and uh, yeah in the next video i'll tell you what we can do to make this better so I'm taking you back to feature engineering just to tell you what we can do to make this uh, models perform better. So if you remember, I actually noted this when we were first going through feature engineering. Basically, the more concise data that you have, the better your model is going to be. If you remember, I mentioned that, for example, EWR, Staten Island, the unknown thingy, Bronx, for example, have way lower amount of data points compared to Manhattan, Brooklyn and Queens. So one thing you can do is say, okay, I think I'm just going to work on only Manhattan, Brooklyn and Queens and I've decided this and my model is only going to predict the hourly uh, income, the average income for a taxi driver in these three regions. That will make your model much better because we have much more information on these very likely that Bronx and Staten Island and these other ones are bringing down our performance also the same thing for count of transactions so as you see here for some places on a certain hour we only have one transaction so maybe this is normal because it's two in the morning for the location ID one. But one thing you can do is to see how many transactions are happening per hour in a given location ID and then say, okay, I only want to include the location IDs that have on average at least 10 transactions, transactions in a given area. And if they don't, I'm just not going to include this location because that's going to be very finicky information. You know, if it's just one transaction, Maybe the next day it's going to be zero transactions or, you know, you can't really guarantee that the amount is $21. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very going to be hard to get the average there and make sure that that's the average amount that a taxi driver earns there. So that's another thing that you can do that will most likely make your model much better.